Worldwide, you are back with comedian David Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. Last night I watched a movie, an Australian movie called Wake in Fright. To me, it's the most terrifying movie ever made. It is a haunting, terrifying depiction of what is the mental illness called the Australian character. If you're a drinker and you're drinking too much, you have to watch this movie. I'll tell you a little story about this movie first. It was made in 1971 and it kind of disappeared. And in 2009, it was remastered and re-released in a couple of like art house cinemas across Australia. And one of them was in Sydney. I think it was called Chevelle Cinema on Oxford Street in Paddington. And one of my mates, Dylan, he called me up one day and I was hungover as fuck. And he's like, come watch this movie with me. You've got to see this movie. I watched it the other day. Come see it with me. I'll buy your ticket. I'm like, I'm fucking hungover as fuck. But yeah, I'm only around the corner. I'll come fucking watch it. And at this stage of my life, I was on shaky fucking ground already. I was more or less a full-blown alcoholic at this stage. I was failing everything I've ever done. The only thing that was getting me by was I was a thief. So I was getting a little bit of money from thieving. That was the only thing I had going for me. I'd failed everything else. I'd failed university. I had no job. I was just a bottom of the barrel loser. I didn't realize that at the time. Looking back, now I can see I was a bottom of the barrel loser. At the time, I still thought I was pretty fucking sweet. So I claw my way out of bed. I go down to the cinema. I go in to watch this movie with Dylan. I had no idea what it was about. All I knew was the title was Wake in Fright. And I was completely unprepared for what I was about to see. It's not a horror film. It's not like a fucking scary movie or anything. What it does, it holds up a mirror. You see your reflection in that movie and nothing is more terrifying than that. And so I watched that movie and I got out of that cinema and I'm like, fuck. And Dylan was looking at me with his fucking shit-eating grin. And I'm like, dude, that was fucked up. I'm like, I am that guy. I'm him. And then he just did a little fucking laugh. And then we went to the pub and I'm like, fuck, I think I'm going to stop drinking. That movie helped sow the seeds to my future sobriety. A year later, I took 14 months off the booze. And watching that movie, especially the way I was at the time, played a pretty significant role. Like whenever you're quitting something, there's a million different things that combine in you making a decision like quitting drinking. It's not just the one thing. Like when you're quitting drinking, it's like a million different things combine that make you stop drinking. This movie definitely was a significant part of it. And up until last night when I watched it again, I probably had thought about that movie at least once a week maybe even once every three or four days for 11 years. It really fucking shook me, that movie, back then. And I watched it again now, and it fucking shook me again. Because I know I was that guy in that movie. And even if I wasn't the main character, I was the other characters too. I was all the characters combined. All the mentally ill people there are in that movie, I've been them at one point or another. So if you are thinking of quitting boozing and you want a little bit of a fucking help along, especially if you're an Australian, you have to watch that movie Wake in Fright, the 1971 version. Not the recent remake. Don't fucking even bother with that. That's going to suck balls. I'm not even going to worry about that. I'll tell you another little coincidental fucking fun fact about that movie. It was shot in a town called Broken Hill. In the movie, the town's Yabba, but it's actually Broken Hill. And Broken Hill just happens to be the last place I had my last bender. It was my final stand as a drinker. I was there for a mate's wedding, five days, and I was like, I'm going to drink as hard as I possibly can. I had a ball over those five days, but it started getting pretty fucking dangerous for me out there. I've talked about that before, but out there, you don't want to fuck with the locals too much because you'll end up in a fucking empty mine shaft in the middle of fucking nowhere. And I was fucking with them maybe a little bit too much, but you have to watch that movie. True drinkers have to watch that movie. 
It's intense. And if you want to know a little bit about the Australian character, no movie has ever encapsulated what it's like to be Australian better than that fucking movie. It's probably the greatest Australian movie ever made. It is fucking terrifying. And we've got some great fucking movies too. There's a lot of fucking shit, but there's some great movies too. I'll give you my top five Australian movies for film buffs out there. For those of you who want to know what Australia is really like, these are the ones you have to watch. You know when you watch Train Spotting and you go, oh yeah, Scotland's fucked. Well, these are the movies you've got to watch to understand Australia's fucked. Number one, go out and watch Wake and Fright. Just do it. Just go watch it, the 1971 version. And when you watch it, let me know how you felt about it too. I want to know if it's just an Australian thing. I want to know if it's as visceral an experience for other people as it is for me. So go watch that, Wake and Fright. The next movie you got to watch is Romper Stomper. This is the movie that pretty much fucking made Russell Crowe. To me, it's by far his best movie. It's weird to say Russell Crowe peaked in 1992, but to me he did. He plays a neo-Nazi skinhead. This is way before he threw phones at people. It's kind of got some American History X vibes to it. Or should I say American History X has some Romper Stomper vibes to it. Go watch that movie. It's a fucking great movie. The next movie I would recommend is Chopper. Fucking old uncle Chop Chop. That's all it is. It's called Chopper. It's about Australia's most famous criminal, maybe behind Ned Kelly, Mark Brandon Chopper Reed. He's the guy who cut off his own fucking ears. He actually went to my high school too. That's how fucked up my high school was. Chopper was alumni of my high school. The fourth movie is Bad Boy Bubby. What doesn't Bad Boy Bubby have? It has incest, murder, rape. It has everything. It's perhaps one of the most demented films ever made. It's famously demented. And the last Australian film I'm going to throw in there. I'm going to say Two Hands. And I'm only going to say that because of one reason. Rose Byrne. One of the most beautiful women on the fucking face of the planet. Heath Ledger's in it too. It's Rose Byrne and Heath Ledger. I'd fuck them both. When I was 20 working at a bar in Sydney, I served Rose Byrne. And she is even more beautiful and stunning in real life than she is in all those movies. I could barely fucking breathe. She's been my biggest crush for ages. Anyway, go watch those five movies. If you're in lockdown, just do it. Those are the five movies that encapsulate Australia best. In my opinion, anyway, I'm not a fucking film buff either. If you can watch those five films and then afterwards go, Australia seems like a nice place that I'd like to visit, then you may be mentally ill yourself. Anyway, that's it. Go watch the films and I'll see you the fuck later.